This is the Triforce. It is divided in three parts. There's the Triforce of Courage, wielded by Link, the Triforce of Wisdom, wielded by Zelda, and finally, the Triforce of Power, wielded by the King of the Desert, Ganondorf. With great power comes great responsibilities, and it seems that Ganondorf is represented as someone who doesn't take his responsibilities correctly. But what if I told you that Ganondorf may not be the villain Hyrule makes him out to be? Hey, I'm Nico, and here are 9 reasons why Ganondorf is not a villain. According to the legend, Ganondorf bears the Triforce of Power, but he actually could bear the Triforce of Determination. The guy is such a hard-working man, ready to do everything in order to achieve his objectives. Look, okay, sometimes he may do some mean things, but you gotta give the man some credit. He builds wonderful-looking castles, he's really good at convincing other people of joining him, like that time he convinced Zend from the Twilight Realm, or you know, that other time where he got the sorcerer Aganim to join him. I mean, he's a pretty influential guy. You may not agree with everything he does, but you gotta give him credit. You know what, Ganon? Keep trying and maybe you'll win one day. Now tell me, okay, what does a villain do? He always plans his next move to conquer the world, he plans to destroy everything, to kill people, whatever. So obviously he doesn't have time for, you know, proper hygiene. But seriously though, seriously, look at Ganondorf's hair! Oh my god, it's so beautiful! I mean, it's clean, it's long... I could see Ganon in a beauty product commercial. He would be so fabulous. Trying to make hair beautiful on the outside causes damage deep inside. New Dove Intense Repair Therapy repairs damage at the heart of hair. As previously stated, the Triforce is separated in three pieces and Ganondorf holds the Triforce of Power. Sadly, the Triforce of Power is too strong for Ganondorf to handle alone, which is why he goes on a power trip! Woohoo! Get it? No? Okay. At many points in many Zelda games, Ganondorf turns into Ganon, a giant scary beast with thirst for blood. This is exactly the transformation that Ganondorf cannot control. He's not himself at this point, and he really just is a, a scary animal or something. Poor Ganon, he's not the villain here, it's the power of the Triforce that is too much for him to handle. He's a victim at this point, come on! In Ocarina of Time, at the end of the game, Adult Link is sent back to the past by Adult Zelda to live his life as a kid and save Hyrule. This leads to young Link and young Zelda telling the King of Hyrule that Ganondorf wants to launch an assault against Hyrule and the royal family. So, you know, without any proof whatsoever, they arrest Ganondorf and sentence him to death. What the heck? I mean, they have no proof. So then the sages chain Ganondorf against a stone slab and they impale him with a sword of pure light. Excuse me, but what? You know, in that timeline, Ganondorf did absolutely nothing. He just planned to help his people. And now, because he was sick of his Gerudo people being left alone, he gets sentenced to death for something he hasn't done? No wonder he gets mad in the future games and seek revenge. He was arrested for no reason. He wasn't a villain yet. And just because two random kids said he was a meanie, now he's supposedly one? That is so messed up. I'm glad you managed to avoid this execution and live, my man, okay, Ganon? Keep going.
Zelda Skyward Sword is the first game in the Legend of Zelda Legacy, well, according to the current timeline and the book Hyrule Historia. And in this exact game, you don't actually fight Ganondorf. Instead, the evil being is called Demise. Demise is the Demon King, he's vicious and he lacks any compassion. He's the incarnation of pure hatred and is willing to kill anyone in his path to get the Triforce. Once he is defeated, Demise says something particularly interesting. He says that his hate never perishes, that it is born anew in a cycle with no end, that an incarnation of his hatred shall follow Link and Zelda forever. What is he actually saying is that Link, Zelda and Ganondorf are actually cursed, they are bound to come back every generation. Ganondorf is not actually evil or a villain, it's the curse and the hatred of Demise that causes him to want the Triforce. Just like it's the curse of being Link and Zelda that makes them want to have it as well. In the end, Ganondorf is cursed and he wouldn't be so evil if it wasn't for the fact that he is the reincarnation of Demise. Whew, that was deep, but, but you follow me, right? Okay, next up, let's go. In this three-way fight for the Triforce, Ganondorf, Link and Zelda have often been together in the same place for a final showdown. If Ganondorf was truly evil, he would try to kill Link and Zelda and steal their part of the Triforce, but that's not really what he wants, he just wants the Triforce, that's it, he doesn't want to kill anyone, okay? Because in Wind Waker, before the final battle, Ganondorf could have easily killed Zelda, after all she was asleep and captive, but no look! He just took care of her, Oh! And after that, during the final fight against Link, at one point, Ganondorf realizes that Zelda is shooting him with light arrows, and instead of just killing her with his sword, he removes them and just slaps Zelda out of the way. You know what? He doesn't want to kill them! They are the one causing trouble and wanting to kill him! I mean, look at Link! He put a sword right through Ganondorf's head! That's messed up, bro! In Ocarina of Time, there are many tribes and each has access to a resource that helps them. The Zoras live in a beautiful domain full of water next to Lake Hylia. The Gorons live in the mountain which is full of rocks and lava, which is no threat to them. They actually want rocks, they, they like to eat it and stuff. The Kokiris live in the forest with the great Deku tree, enjoying mother nature and living the life peacefully. And then there's the Gerudo tribe, they live in the desert. They have no water, no grass, no food, no nothing. They have sandstorms and, you know, nothing. They don't really live the good life there. They pretty much try to survive off what they have. So, of course, they're not really kind of strangers getting on their territory. That's how they have left, of course. Who's the leader of the Gerudo tribe? Ganondorf. Ganondorf is just really annoyed that his people are left to die by the King of Hyrule. He provides care and help for the people living in Kokariko, in Zora's domain, in Kokiri's forest, in Goran city, but he just doesn't care at all about the people of the desert. So of course Ganondorf will try to claim the land for him, that's the only way he can save his people. Ganondorf is not trying to take over Hyrule, he's just trying to save his kind. The Legend of Zelda The Wind Waker takes place in a vast sea. There are many islands with inhabitants throughout the Great Sea, but never do you see a giant plain of grass and mountains, you know, like in other Zelda games. This is because the Great Sea is actually covering the entirety of Hyrule, which was flooded by the gods in an event called the Great Flood. Hyrule was still under the sea for eternity, or more like until Link and Zelda actually made their way there. What we learn is that Ganondorf wants to use the Triforce to bring back Hyrule to the way it was before. And what's wrong with that? I mean, Hyrule is beautiful, it's vast and it's wonderful, so why wouldn't you want to save it? The gods flooded the lands and killed many people in the process. Ganondorf is just trying to bring Hyrule back and erase the mistakes that the gods did. Yet, Link and Zelda only listen to the King of Hyrule who pretty much says, 
Oh, I can't handle the land anymore, so who cares? Let's just live it down the sea. Oh, <laughs> lol. If he was a true king, he would try to claim back his land. Ganondorf is actually more of a king than the actual king of Hyrule will ever be. War is a terrible thing. War only takes lives. Sadly, in the world we live in, war happens every day. And Hyrule doesn't escape that rule. During the Great Hylian Civil War, all tribes were fighting for their own interests. They all wanted a piece of the Triforce. Ganondorf was no exception to that rule. He too wanted a piece of the Triforce. I'm not trying to defend him here, but literally everyone in Hyrule knew that if they got their hands on the Triforce, they could have everything they ever wanted. The Hylian family ended up getting the Triforce and uniting people under one banner, but you know what, it could have been Ganondorf. And who knows, maybe Ganondorf would have made a good king, maybe his intentions wouldn't have been so vile if he was the one in charge, maybe in that timeline the king of Hyrule would be the bad guy trying to get the Triforce for himself. What I'm trying to say here is that during war no one is the good guy or the bad guy, Everyone is just fighting for their own interest. In that sense, Ganondorf is no more of a villain or a hero than any other people that fought this war are. Hey, don't miss anything. Click subscribe. And if you're super cool and want to go the extra mile, turn on notification. Alright, bye!